It has been five years today since a heavy blow to my head drastically changed Jenny's and my life. Brian and Dan in our media department said that there are lots of you kind-hearted people who still ask how I'm doing. Those who do, you must be relatives. You're real saints. Fairly often, when someone asks me the standard rhetorical question here in North American culture, how are you doing, and pause for more than a split second, I try to give them a quick update like I'm trying to do here. As I run down my checklist, let's see. Back hurts unless I walk and sit like Quasimodo. They nod in affirmation. Two, my joints creak and pain me. Bigger nod. I lose words I used to use all the time. My listeners crack smiles as their heads now sway from side to side in affirmation. Then I mention my kidney stones and the associated extra plumbing that came with it. At about this point, they take over. Isn't that the way it is, they say? They start adding things to the list. I catch myself nodding and then smiling. It's as if the entire world over 60 years of age has contracted quadriplegia. My spirit begins to rise. I can almost hear the music beginning to swell. I'm no longer in a special class. It's as though I have returned home from chemotherapy and all my friends have shaved their heads, same, same, just like me. I'm no longer alone. Well, at least not here in Central Florida where the medium age is about 72. Golf carts are the vehicles in vogue and if you're not on Social Security and enrolled in Medicare, you practically don't count. Now, on the bright side, I'm slowly checking items off my bucket list. For one, I've learned to ride a two-wheel bike again. It's a little scary. I, I ride kind of like I walk from side to side. Last weekend, I checked off my Walmart wish. Jenny took me to the emergency room hospital in my pajamas, when I had kidney stones. An hour and a CAT scan and about 10 pounds later, we went to the Walmart pharmacy on the way home. While Jenny went to the pharmacy, I wanted to make the most of every excursion, so I decided to visit Subway in the Walmart while Jenny filled my prescription for narcotics. I'd forgotten that I was still in my pajamas, and you know what? No one at Walmart seemed to notice. Well, except for two women who winked at me. That made me feel a little uncomfortable until it dawned on me that they hadn't gotten dressed that morning either. A feeling of acceptance is a powerful good thing. It was really working for me that day because, well, I've secretly wanted to be a true Walmart person, you know, for a long time. No, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I really have learned some good lessons about life over the last 43,800 hours, which is five years for you normal people. As a high IQ, that's our abbreviation for high functioning, incomplete quadriplegic. The life lessons I've learned through these last five years of pain and a crippled body include that preparing to die is an important part of life, that I've fallen deeper in love with Jenny. There should be regular tension between us but it's incredibly rare. Before, I could be kind of insensitive. Now I don't feel almost anything. I'm kidding, it's just because most of my body is numb. That I didn't used to stop to smell the roses enough, but now I do. Around our house, they usually smell of sweat and dirt from playing in our five acres of woods and with our two horses. I'm talking about our precious 19 grandchildren. I've also learned that the nerve damage that renders my hands inoperative are painful and debilitating blessings. Now, when I want to teach my grandchildren a skill, I let them hold the tools because I can't. Before, I expected them to learn by watching me do it. How is it that we, as a society, wonder why our young adults can't maintain a car, don't understand basic home construction, can't sew or cook, can't balance a checkbook, can't calculate the true cost of car ownership. Maybe it's because we don't give them hands-on responsibility. We keep doing it for them. 
I've had time to also notice why many children growing up with what are called strong Christian parents don't value faith and leave church. I think it's because their parents give lip service to making the Bible their only rule of faith and conduct, but don't spend much time and effort committing those Bible precepts to memory, nor wrestling with how those principles apply to real-life dilemmas. I have learned that when I think that it's tough having hands that don't work, I frequently fail to consider that my neighbor has no hands. That it is true if you have no goals in life, well, you'll never reach them. But if you fall into the trap of evaluating life based on reaching goals, you'll live to regret it because life doesn't consist of meeting goals. Consider the old saw, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. In my last conversation with my Aunt Rachel Saint just before she died, she told me that she wasn't a very capable Bible teacher, nor a good linguist. She was translating the Bible for the Waurani, and she said she wasn't much of a Bible translator. She said she couldn't help the jungle people much medically, and she was sometimes overprotective of the Stone Age tribe she spent the last 36 years of her life with. But when I asked her what she did have that God could use, she gave me a simple formula for living the productive Christian life. She said, first, well, I love the Lord Jesus with all my heart, and second, I trusted him completely. Then after a pause, she added, number three, and I guess I just learned to persist in doing what God gave me to do. That's a dynamite formula. Finally, I've learned that life is painful for everyone. Trusting God to take away pain is admirable, but trusting God's will and His love when He doesn't take away the pain, that's our greatest opportunity to demonstrate our faith. Job said it much better than I can. When his wife gave up and suggested that he should just curse God and die, Job's answer has made him a hero for millions of hurting people. Job 2.10 says that Job replied, What? Should I accept good from the hands of God, blessings from God's hands, and never anything bad, never adversity? Should we accept blessings and not adversity, like Job? There's more, but Ida was, the Waurani would say, that's enough. Thank you to those of you who have remembered Jenny and me, and some of you who regularly pray for us in our challenges. But please, don't feel sorry for us. We don't believe I had an accident. We believe this is part of God's plan. Speaking of sweet, sweet Jenny, let me tell you, I wake up every day with no choice about living with quadriplegia, but Jenny wakes up every day and has to choose to live with it. P.S. Thank you for being part of Team iTech. I love it, and you too.